What's up everyone, welcome back to EWC. I've been really into the VC 1921s. It's something that has been just, you know, on my mind. It's been bothering me for a very long time that I don't have these watches. And the more research I do, the more I love it. So I'm gonna go right now, pick up my brand new Platinum Limited Edition 100th Anniversary 1921 watch. I'll show you guys in a bit. But I also got a secondhand watch that I wanna show you guys. So I'm gonna go. All right, guys, you guys have been here before with me. Um, you know what? I'm gonna save you guys the trouble. I'm gonna go in really quick, get it, get back in the car so we'll go to the studio and check it out. So I just got the watch. I'm super stoked. Can't wait to get to the studio because we got the lighting stuff all set up. This whole VC craze, I know everyone just wants to talk about the overseas and I do too, but I don't know if it's my age or that I'm getting a little more mature now. I love these dress watches more and more. I can't wait to show you guys everything. I just wanted to share my happiness right now and let you guys know. Anyway, I am not wearing anything right now because I want to show you guys later. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So I am at the EWC studio and I have before me my very first <laughs> Thanks Mario. Okay, you want to be on the show? All right, everyone say hi to Mario. Say hi Okay, this is Mario All right, okay, can you let daddy uh, go do my EWC now? Thank you All right to EWC. So I have before me my very first VC Historic American 1921. So I got this as a secondhand watch. This popped up on the market a little while ago and I just souped it up. I had to. I think from a price perspective, it made total sense. I think MSRP for this in Taiwan is over 1 million NTD. I'm not sure of the exact price, but I scooped this up for like a little over 650,000 NTD. I think that, you know, it's bottomed out and I think there's only one way to go and that's up. But let's get more into the details of this watch and why I love it so much. It comes from an era of partying, you know, the prohibition, which is the 1920s. So what's interesting about the 1920s is that a lot of people you know, they, they were just kind of like held down in a way. They wanted to drink, you weren't allowed to drink, but you just wanted to get out and party. But there was also an explosion with creatives, um, with Art Deco, different types of designs. And if you just only look at watches, such as VC, they came out with some really, really radical designs and really cool designs from the 1910s to the 1920s, um, and all the way to the 30s. But something that really stuck out was the 1921. So from 1919 to 1921, they actually made this watch for America, but they sold it to a target demographic that really liked to drive cars. And that's why a lot of people say that this was one of the original driver's watches. A cool story because a lot of people thought that, you know, it was actually just for drivers. Christian Salmani, which is the style and heritage director of VC, he was talking about back in the 1920s, a preacher named Samuel Parks Cadman. He was quite a famous preacher back in the day and he would, you know, do a lot of broadcasts on radio. Mr. Cadman, uh, he acquired a couple of 1921s from VC in Geneva. And while he was preaching, um, he would wear the watch and, you know, nonchalantly, uh, he was able to, you know, sneak a couple peeks at the time to know how long everything was going. I think back in 2008, VC decided to do kind of like a re-release, a reissue of the 1921. This particular watch is from 2011, so it's about 11 years old. The rose gold, the ivory dial with the black brigade numerals and the black brigade hands, it's just so nice and it's such a gentleman's watch, but it has such a twist and a radical design 
And that's what really, really attracted me to this watch. I have to say, I love it. It's, it's something that is so rare and so different. And I just had to have it. So when I did all the vlogs before about VC, I actually put in an order for this watch, which is what I am going to show you guys in a bit. Okay, so I just wanna talk a little bit about this watch. It actually comes with, you know, the Maltese cross buckle. It comes with brown croc leather straps, which I took off and I ordered a custom ABP concept leather NATO strap with custom rose gold buckles because I thought that it would be pretty cool. You know, this dark gray matched with rose gold. It's, it's an awesome mix. A much more attractive in my opinion and more my age. When I put it on with a NATO leather strap, it actually feels really sporty. And I think that's what I wanted. I wanted the mix of sporty and classy. So obviously for me, the design of this watch and everything about it, you know, just makes me feel like it's a perfect match for me. The fact that I don't see other people wearing it yet, I like that. I like being different, I like being unique. So let's leave this here. I'm going to unbox the Platinum 100th Anniversary 1921 American History. Okay, all right, here we go. So I ordered this last year, um, late summer, almost fall. Um, it did get here actually a little while ago. I just didn't go pick it up and I was just being lazy. Um, I wanted to wait till both watches were here to show you guys and I haven't worn this at all. Um, I just have to say the differences between the two boxes being, you know, 10, 11 years apart is quite big. You know, this is a brand new box design, beautiful polished wood, you know, with gold letters inside here, and it's got this beautiful pattern. Um, this is obviously nice too, it's wood. Uh, the watch was probably right here, but they used recycled material, and you know, just 10, 11 years later, I mean, look at it, it's all messed up now. I mean, it's crumbled, it's deteriorating. Um, there's actually, it's kind of, you know, it's not a pleasant sight. It's, yeah, it's kind of gross, to be honest. Everything's like falling apart. So, uh, I'm just gonna put it back. But, there's one thing really cool that I do like about the older version, is that it came with a passport. And, uh, you know, the certificate, everything inside. It has the photo of the watch, you know, all the numbers and everything when it was made. And, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. I, I like the design concept, which is kind of missing with this because this actually just comes with a card, um, the certificate, which remained the same, but it doesn't have the passport anymore. You know, just a little manual and that's about it. Yeah, so there's pros and cons to everything. They did give me this beautiful leather pouch and it has the Maltese cross right here, which is elegant, beautiful, you know, it's like a little travel pouch. If I need to go anywhere with it and I need to take the watch off, I can just put it in here and it's well protected. Now, let's get this going so I can show you guys how beautiful this Platinum Edition is. Oh wait, you know what? I have to press a button right here. So there's a button that opens up the box. The button has a Maltese cross right here and you just gotta push it and it opens. And look at that. Oh, this is so gorgeous. I have to say, this is definitely one of the most gorgeous 1921s out there. I really love precious metals. I think that the heft, the feel, when you wear it on the wrist, you know it's something special. You know the value is there. And all of these Maisons, these amazing watchmakers, they always leave platinum for their very best. I have to say, it is definitely one step above this rose gold, although this rose gold is beautiful. There's some differences right off the bat. One is the dial. It's sandblasted. It's got some type of texture on the dial, which this one doesn't have. This is more of a flat surface. Uh, there's no texture on it. And just by comparing these two, you can tell that the numerals and the hands are black on the rose gold. But the platinum, it has white gold hands and white gold numerals. 
the white gold numerals are actually placed on top of the dial. So you can tell there's depth, which is such a nice touch. When you see the little details like that, it just makes you appreciate it so much more. Going back to the original models, um, a lot of people said the crown was actually on the other side, right here. Back in 1919, I did see some references and some photos of the crown being here, and the 12 o'clock was actually on the left side, not on the right side, right here. Within the archives, which is over 100 years old now, you can tell the real history that there were both versions. So I think they just kind of chose what they wanted to go with, with the reissue. And also, you know, the seconds is actually where the three to five o'clock, while there are some versions on the left side. So over the years, uh, VC has come out with different boutique editions, such as the New York edition, which I think is limited to only 64. And I think that one is a gorgeous, gorgeous dial because of the numbers being a lot thicker and fatter and the hands being a lot fatter too. If I could ever get my hands on that one, I definitely want to collect that one. So if you guys know anyone that wants to sell one, let me know. Uh, but there are other types of variants, such as special calendars, and you're gonna see a lot more of these at the auctions, I believe. Um, this is definitely a watch that I think is only gonna keep going up. Like I said, the market price for this already bottomed out, so I only see it going up. It's such a rare sight to be able to see one, but I think that's why I wanted to collect these two. The case back is see-through, it is beautiful. The older one, I think it has the Geneva Hallmark crest on it, but it's much smaller, like around here. Uh, I'll give you guys a tight shot, but on the Platinum, it's very visible. The Geneva Hallmark seal is right here. You can see that it's limited edition, 98 out of 100. There's only 100 in the world and I got one of them. So yes, you guys can hate all you want, but let's talk a little bit about the caliber. It's a manual wound 4400, kind of like their entry level movement. It's one of their workhorses. It's got a 65 hour power reserve. The movement is actually less than three millimeters thick. So the whole watch, the case is actually about eight millimeters thick. That's it. That is amazing. I, I like how thin this watch is and I like my ultra thin watches. The diameter of this watch is 40 millimeters. They also have a 36.5. For me, it's the perfect size. I think that the 36.5 is definitely wearable as well. I know a lot of guys out there like the smaller size watches, but you know, if you're looking for a couple's watch, I actually think that 36.5 could be nice to have for your other half. Either one is awesome, but I prefer the 40 millimeters. Another cool thing about the Platinum Edition is that it comes with a navy blue croc leather, but what's special is the stitching. The stitching I heard has platinum in it. I mean, I, I don't know how much platinum it has in the stitching, but that's what I was told. I guess you guys can look it up. I may be wrong. <laughs> Maybe that was one of the things that sold me. You know, it's, it's, it's something that is just so gorgeous to look at. The more I look at these watches, the more I feel like it has such character. And that's why I think that I've been attracted to it. I know it's a lot of info about this particular watch. I just wanted to share my passion. I just wanted to share, you know, what I just collected and what I'm in love with right now. Um, but I just want to know which one do you guys like better? Do you guys like the rose gold or do you guys like the platinum? Leave a comment down below, let us know, and we're gonna do a EWC giveaway. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'll see you guys on the next EWC, and we're probably gonna do some talking watches. I'm gonna bring some friends on, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.